everybody, I'm the Velvet Sparrow, and I'm joined here again by Heart Hero. What's giggity good up in the hizzity hood? All right, we are back with another episode of Let's Read Katao Sojo. Uh, aside from, from the relationship really starting, what actually happened last time? I kind of forgot. Mm. Besides the fact that I made, besides the fact that I didn't make any ass jokes. I mean, you probably. Oh yeah, because you normally make an ass joke about Emmy because of her like starting position. Weird. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> Damn girl, you shit with that ass. Yes. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. <laughs> Damn mommy, you shit with that ass? Yes. <laughs> I need <laughs> Is there like a full chronological compilation of then of the Devil Artemis stuff? <laughs> I have no idea. I need to watch all of them. <laughs> Zero to piston and instant. My goodness, you have talent. <laughs> oh no! It's the Empire, the Borg, the Orcs, and all these other fucking enemies I gotta fight. They just kidnapped Kermit. Guess I better stop him. I better stop him. I'm I'm seriously waiting for Dragon Ball Z Universe to have Shallot as a playable character, just so I can mod in Kermit, just so I can play as Cell, Shallot, and Kermit, and like for every level. That would be so fucking awesome. Yeah, obviously I'd be playing as Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> so like, just sha So yeah, just Kermit, Super Saiyan God Shallot, and full power or perfect cell. <laughs> just, oh, that just, would be perfect. And we're just casually solo every single fight. And we're just screaming. <laughs> 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 Not, no, that'd be if I had Zarbon on the team, and nobody likes Zarbon. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And just, like, for his ultimate attack, Kermit just pulls out a fucking Glock. <laughs> He's just, like, he doesn't do a dramatic pose. He just goes... He goes... <laughs> well, that was easy. All right, class is uneventful. After the final bell rings, I find myself alone with Mudo again. Hmm... <clears throat> Time to put on my best Markiplier impression. Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier. Welcome back to Let's Play Five Nights at Freddy's 2. <laughs> so, it looks like we've all assembled for the second meeting of the Science Club. Or is it the first? What do you think? Should we count yesterday as a meeting? Well, we did form the club yesterday, didn't we? Seems like club business. So we can safely call yesterday a meeting. Mudo smiles in his usual, stilted and awkward way. I wonder if the muscles in his face are just not shaped correctly to let him smile naturally. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry, don't worry, young Hassel. The, mus the muscles in my face just have no possible way of actually letting me smile. <clears throat> you really do have a knack for this, I think. You do really do have a knack for this, I think. Logical thought process, that is. I guess so. A scientist speaks with authority, Hassel. The answer is yes, I do. Hmm. When the world wants to know how it works, we tell it. Even if all we've got is a decent hypothesis. Hmm. But we must sound certain anyway, because we're the authorities on the subject, right? He chuckles to go along with his awkward smile at his awkward joke. I'm doing my best not to grimace, but I don't think I'm being too successful. That is, that's entirely false, of course. We know a lot, but nobody's an expert on how the world works, if only because nobody can be sure. With no certainty, there are no e experts. But we like to pretend sometimes. There's some things we can be certain of, right? Yes, but no. We know gravity's there, for example. To illustrate, Mudo picks up a pencil and drops it. See? Still there. But it's good to check every once in a while. Just in case one day we all go flying off the face of the goddamn planet Earth. 
That's why you still see researchers mucking about with gravity. We're not all flying around like Superman, but if titties just somehow became smaller and all shrunk, we'd know something was up. Yeah. We're pretty sure we know how it works, but there's always a chance that something isn't how we think it is. So you check, and check, and check. That's science in a nutshell, Hisao. The whole time I've listened. The whole time I've listened, feeling rather spellbound. Ludo seems to really be passionate about this stuff. I think. It's hard to tell sometimes. How the world works. How humans work. How the universe works. All these questions to be answered. And depending on what I get into, maybe I could even figure out a way to fix my heart. That said, I don't think that's a real priority for me. Besides, as we start discussing the book he gave me yesterday, I find myself more and more interested in that than my heart condition. Before we even realize it, an hour's gone by. Hmm. Well, let's call this meeting over for now. Okay. We'll have another meeting tomorrow, or uh, the day after. Consider this for a moment. Call it the day after. I've got a lot of grading to do. So two days at after the day after tomorrow. <laughs> okay, see you then. As I exit the classroom, I realize that I don't really have anything to do today. Emmy and I didn't make plans, so I guess I'll go to the library. Be doing homework in my room anyway. Hmm. The library always seems cooler than the rest of the building. Probably to keep the books from getting damaged by excessive heat and humidity. Books are sturdy objects, but if you want to keep them in good condition, in good condition, it takes a little effort. I've got several books that are so well worn the page is are barely clinging to the spine. It seems impossible for them to still be usable, but if you handle them with care, I make my way to the main desk where I spot Yuko busying herself with something or other. She smiles at me as I enter and waves. Hello, Hassau. Good to see you again. What are you looking for this time? Yo, hey. titties. Yeah, do we look like Kenji? <laughs> but I mean, the, I mean, she's kind of got them squished together, so I mean, I'm looking. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> well, nothing in particular, I guess. I just didn't feel like going back to my room, is all. Yuko nuts. Well, if you're unoccupied, maybe you can help me look for something? Sure, what do you need? Yuko brings a finger to her lips and looks around for, and furtive, furtively, whatever. She seems to be looking for furtively. these droppers. Come closer. I take a few hesitant steps towards well, forward while feeling distinctively un, distinctly unnerved. Yuko lure, lowers her voice into a confidential whisper. I'm on the trail of the Yamaku cat burglar. Mm -hmm. the what? Shh, the walls have ears as how Or they might. But listen, those missing books, remember them? Uh, yeah? Well, they weren't missing, they were stolen. Inji, you bastard! Damn it, I'm convinced of it. I remember you saying something of the sort earlier, but how do you know? Yuko leans in closer, and if possible, whispers even lower. Because I found one of his hiding places! He did what? Yuko looks triumphant. I found one of his stashes. It was under one of the stairwells in the boys' dorm. Three books I've been looking for, all there. I suspected a thief before, but this proves it. So did you take back the books? Yuko looks as if I just suggested did she walk around naked. Are you nuts? He can't know I'm onto him. He might got a ground He might go to ground and evade capture. Uh uh huh. So what do you need my help with then? Yuko casts another gra glance around the library and leans in closer. You got a spy for me. Spy? Yeah. Yes. When you're in the dorms, you know? An international super, super spy. spy. Super, super spy! spy! <laughs> I always found that song funny because he starts screaming like a banshee, like, oh yeah, aren't you supposed to be undercover? I'm an ant. <laughs> well, like, aren't all the actors who play these characters like fucking five? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, Austin was my favorite because he was autistic. Mm. Like, the most autistic out of all of them. Ah, uh, yes, the most of the autisticness. <laughs> Keep an eye out for this suspicious activity. What constitutes suspicious, anyway? I mean, Kendi's a pretty suspicious dude. I'll wager he barely goes to class. And it's much less sneaks yeah. into the library to pilfer books. So what's the harm in saying yes? This will get me out of this weird conversation. Yeah, I can do that, no problem. You go straightens up and claps excitedly. Great! Now hurry up and talk about something else in case someone comes in. How's the school treating you? Uh, pretty well, actually. I'm running in the mornings with Emmy, uh, Emmy Ibarazaki, right? Uh, yeah. How'd you know? I served you two in the tea house, remember? I deduced that if you were going on to run with anybody, it'd be probably be her. She looks pleased with herself. Impressive. Anyway, yeah, we've been running in the mornings. And, uh, we kind of started dating. Yuko claps her hands together excitedly. Really? That's great. I'll bet you two are great together. I love seeing people find one another like that, you know? Even thought to myself when you walked in the sh I wonder if that kid will end up with one of those girls. I mean, technically, we already did once. Yeah, then we reset time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, how cool would that be for an anime about a guy who ends up resetting time just to date all the girls in his class to see which one would be the best girlfriend for him? That would be fucking awesome. Um... There'd have to be a bit of a twist to it, otherwise people are going to call it boring. Yeah, I understand that, but like the whole idea is that the season has him go down different avenues. He learns a bunch of shit about himself, like tons of things about himself. No, but and, I mean, you know, like, someone's going to try to make it a horror thing where like the, some of the girls end up remembering and then they go either fucking crazy, call him a cheating ass bitch, or they try to kill people. I don't fucking know. I mean, yeah, they, they could, we could go that way. I mean, there's always got to be a way. horror thing to it. I don't think it has to be horror. I think they could have some existentialist or something later. I don't know. Just some things that could, uh, you know. I don't know, because I don't know, because that's what you and me and her did. That's and that's mm. what Doki Doki did. So. Yeah, and that's what Doki Doki did, but I mean, like... No, I mean, like, because you and me and her is, like, the one that did it first. That's why I had to mention it. And I'm going to yeah. be honest, it actually did it better. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, because... Because, <laughs> like, freaking you and me and her would actually stop the player from doing things in order to keep you trapped there. Like, it... Yeah, but, like, Doki Doki, it's just, like, press escape. It works. Mm. <laughs> really. Yuko doesn't seem to notice my somewhat weirded out tone and nods affirmatively. Yep. I could tell you'd wind up with, with one of them, you know? I've got an eye for that sort of thing. Of course. Her expression droops slightly. I'm not so good at it myself. Well, I'm sure it's not true. Oh, it's true. I met this guy once. We got along really great. But it turned out he was younger than me. It was kind of weird, but not terribly so. What was really weird is that he disappeared one day. I've not seen him since then. You guys go to the same school. Unless he's deliberately trying to avoid you. Yeah. Yeah, Kenji's trying to avoid her, that's why. That explains why he's... Actually, that would explain why he's stealing those library books. Just so he doesn't have to talk to her. Oh, that fucking... That dick. That fucking dickhead. Talk to her! Oh, it does seem kind of odd. Doesn't it? I hope it wasn't something I did. I mean, technically it was, but it's not really your fault. Yeah, Kenji's just a bitch. Yeah, Kenji just doesn't know that it's okay to be tired after sex. <laughs> I feel compelled to reassure her. I'm sure it wasn't. I intend to try and calm her down further, but both of us jump in surprise as the ring suddenly coming from my pocket. Yuko sighs to steady herself as I pull the phone from my pocket. I feel a little sheepish for indirectly causing the incident. Oh, God. 
What model is that? I have no idea. That's a fucking flip phone. Yeah, this game was... I mean, like, this game was being made back in 2009. And then it came out in, like, 20... Uh, I need to look up, like, if there actually is a proper timeline for this thing. But Jesus Christ, I feel old looking at this thing. Emmy, what's up? Oh, thank God. I haven't called your phone before, so I didn't know if this number would work or whether you would pick up, and I can't... Whoa, Emmy, slow down. What's wrong? There's a pause on the other side of the line during which I can hear Emmy trying to control her breathing in order to calm down. Something's got her terribly agitated and it's starting to agitate me. Can you just... Can you stop by? Like, sure. now or shortly after now? I really, really need to talk to you. Oh, God. Josh? What happened? Booty call. <gasps> I'm pretty sure this is a booty call. Damn, girl, you finna shit with that ass. <laughs> no, because I mean, like... Okay, Rin and Hanako have, like, the least amount of H scenes in this game. Emmy has the most. Damn. Yeah. And with Shizune and Lily, I think they, they have two apiece. Emmy has, like, three or four. Oh, damn. She horny. There's a tone of pleading in the last sentence. I don't think I've ever heard from her. Of course, I'll be right there. So hold steady, okay? I increase... In my increasingly agitated state, I apparently started saying things that don't quite make sense. Okay, I'll be okay. See you soon. I pressed the button to end the call before slipping the phone back into my pocket. Apologize for, to you, Ko, for, for running off and run off for the booty! Perhaps booty, 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 booty rockin everywhere. Booty, 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 booty rocking everywhere. Yeah, perhaps at some point I would have stopped to think about this time. Emma, how suspicious it looks for a guy to enter the girl's dorm at this hour. Except right now, I'm just concerned with getting to Emmy and finding out what's wrong and how I can help her. I knock on the door and, and greet her with a subdued, come in. Something is very wrong as I stare at the scene before me. Emmy's there, yes. But she's in a wheelchair. And her legs are missing. I glance around the room and see them sitting in a corner, looking like they've been thrown there. Emmy responds to my entrance with a lopsided grin that is both pleased to see me and completely, utterly heartbroken. Hi, Sal. Looks like she's been crying, but if she was, she stopped now. I notice that I'm a little out of breath, having taken the, st the stairs two at uh, a time in order to get here. My heart seem doesn't, doesn't seem to mind the strain, though. I'm, I file this happy fact away for later consideration. Like when I'm not staring somewhat dumbstruck at my girlfriend in a wheelchair. <laughs> Realizing that I'm, I still have not responded to her greeting, my brain lurches into gear. Emmy, what happened? Yes, I should have listened to you, Sal. My leg's got a nasty infection. I'm not allowed to run on it for at least a couple weeks. She gives a bitter laugh that shouldn't, have been, that shouldn't be coming from her. <laughs> Can't even walk on it. I should have used a crutch and kept one of my legs, but... I didn't see a point. Why hop? You can't run on one leg. Oh god, that poor baby! <laughs> there goes my baby! Alright. At least that's my that's my uh that's my obscure song reference of the day. I don't think the audience could have heard it heard it because your mic was speaking. Oh shit. How could this happen to me? I made my mistakes, got nowhere to run. My song was more obscure. I said obscure reference. Yeah. At least this way I can still, I don't know, roll fast or something. Yeah. Roll fast. That's good, right? Gotta go fast. <laughs> my awkward attempt to look on the bright side seemed unappreciated, but not really effective. Let me shrugs again. It's just kind of a nuisance. I mean, you can't even eat up on the roof now. No wheelchair access. Yeah, but that's not a big deal, right? I mean, we can still eat together, and that's the important thing. Lopsided grin again. It hurts to look at. I suppose so, yeah. You think a school like this would have wheelchair access to literally everywhere in the building? I mean, like, but no one's supposed to be on the roof, though. Oh. Yeah. I mean, still. Wheelchair access. Yeah. That shit's important, fool. Like I said, it's a nuisance. I mean, I haven't really used a wheelchair in... She thinks for a minute. 
Maybe seven thousand years. Seven years, something like that. Anyway, once I was seven years old and I could slam dunk. I had eleven girlfriends. Got elected president. <laughs> got elected president. I fucking hate that song so goddamn much. Uh, but seven years is such a good song. You mean Are the you song about the where... parody version? No, no. I mean like the actual song because. It's like the song that's supposed to be about him being humble and like looking back at, like, on his life. It ha- literally like midway onto the fucking song has a goddamn crowd screaming his name. It's just basically he's jerking himself off the entire time. And like, oh, I, didn't... I would appreciate like, look, I did not consent to getting jerked off to in front of. Or like how that didn't... phrase goes. I did not consent to this, therefore I fucking hate it. Most other songs where it's self-aggrandizing, most other songs that feel extremely masturbatory in nature, like, I don't know, Infinite's theme, those ones are or, fine. Or anything by Taylor Swift. Sometimes. It's like 50-50 with her stuff, honestly. I'm not, but to be fair, I'm not really a big fan of her stuff anyway. Ooh, did I just say that out loud on the internet? Yeah, you're probably going to get crucified now. <laughs> Come at me. Hey, I don't think you want to fuck with Swifties. It's for the same reason why. Your booze mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer. Every Look, breath I I'm... take without your cons- consent gives me life. Thomas, I don't mess with Swifties for the same reason I don't mess with furries. If they can afford thousands of dollars in tickets and fursuits, they can afford a nine dollar p- like pipe bomb in my mailbox. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I don't really. Yeah, well, I actually, like, don't really answer the mail that often, so I'm good. What about your mother? Then, they, then they'll get what's coming to them. Oh, boy. Okay, Shadow the Hedgehog. You're a colorful bunch. <laughs> a long time. I'm afraid I'm a bit out of practice. Well, fortunately, it's only temporary, right? I mean, not. Oh, yeah, of course. It's not like a blossom permanently. I mean, but you it's... can't lose something you never had. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pain in the ass all the same. And I'd sympathetically. Something much else I can do, after all. <laughs> what am I going to do? Say I told you so? Although I did tell her to get that leg looked at. But by the time I noticed, it was too late anyway. Do you need help with anything? Uh, that is, uh, can I help with anything? Amy shakes her head and has a bit of her usual grin back. Nah, I can manage fine by myself. Although, if you want to help me over to my bed, it would save me the trouble of rolling over there myself. I blush in spite of myself. <laughs> Amy giggles. You're such a prude, Hissau. Oh, shit. Yep, I was right. So oh, good. I'm not, I'm not a prude. I just wouldn't want to take advantage of a young woman such as yourself. It's ungentlemanly. I wheel Emmy's chair to her bed and easily scoop her up and deposit her there. She quickly sorts herself out and sits on the side. She's actually a little heavier than she looks. It'd be rude of me to observe this aloud, of course. Cause she got an ass. It's small, but it's heavy. It's Man. pure muscle. Man, you're kind of heavy. Ah! <laughs> Emmy hits me with the pillow. Ass. Just saying is all. Must be all that running. At the mention of running, his grin falters slightly. I guess I won't have to worry about that for a bit, huh? Maybe I'll lose some weight. That's why... You, that's what you do to lose weight, right? Cease physical activity? I'm pretty sure that's what the nurse would recommend. Speaking of which, are you still... Are you gonna still be showing up in the morning? I hate to run alone. Ah, oh, shit. Amy sudden interjects in more disgruntled muttering or anything too profane causes me to look over in shock. She's leaning forward, trying to cover the fact that she's crying by covering her eyes with a hand. Course, Baby, don't cry. I'm here. Of course, the subdued sobbing makes it pretty obvious that she's crying. Hey, I'm sorry. Forget I said anything, okay? I place a hand gingerly around her and pull her close. I can think of nothing else to say or do. I do comfort someone who's just lost their legs again. Amy wraps me in a hug and stays that way for a while. Sorry. I'm pretty bad, bad at this whole comforting thing, I guess. Don't say that. I'm fine, really. Her voice is slightly muffled by my chest. I pat her head ready, reassuringly. That's the spirit, right? You get through this fine. I know it. Besides, I'm here to help you, remember? 
Emmy lifts her head and stares at me with tear-stained eyes. Can you? Can you really? She's grinning lopsidedly. Something sparkles in her gaze. Can't tell if I'm being mocked or not. Of course. I mean, uh, I mean, sure, you're a bit heavy, but <clears throat> my witty comeback is uh, my witty comeback is cut off by the sudden press of Emmy's lips on mine. I'm caught off guard and I'm rewarded by hitting my head on the wall behind her bed. Ow! Eh. Emmy pulls back, trying to look concerned rather than like she's about to laugh. <laughs> you okay? Sorry. I rub my head ruefully and grin back at her. Caught me off guard there. Is this going to become a habit? Am I going to be lectured by Shizune and Misha more? At the mention of that duo, oh, Emmy giggles. Honestly, those two. If I didn't know why, I'd be utterly confused as to why she hangs out around someone so bossy. <laughs> which one are we talking about? You know exactly which one. And Hisao, Misha's hardly bossy. So what's the reason then? Because she's gay. Huh? Yeah, why does that remind me of that scene from Happy Death Day? You, you are gay! gay! You are that gay! Movie sucked. That movie <laughs> sucked. <laughs> okay, that, that, was, that line was funny, though. It was fucking hilarious. I'm but tired of helping you come out, so you know what? Fuck you, you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh... Okay, just so you're aware, audience, it's Josh and I, we're both not straight, so we're allowed to say the following. Hey, you're one of the members of the Skittle Squad, aren't you? You're a fruit! Ooh, fruit, I like You're that. a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you are! <laughs> The reason why Ooh, Misha... fruit. I like grapes. <laughs> the, the reason why Misha hangs around Shizune. Emmy waves off my question with a smile. No idea. I see. Anyway, you seem to be forgetting the original question, don't you? Oh, yeah. Guess I am. You wouldn't mind giving a guy a little warning, would you? Otherwise, I'm liable to end up with a concussion. I'm besides the point by rubbing the back of my head. Emmy giggles madly. You could wear a helmet. Some kids here do, you know. Or I could just take revenge! I grab a pillow from behind, from beside me and whack Emmy over the head. Emmy topples off the bed and lands on the floor with a thump. She got knocked the fuck out! Her arms promptly reappear on the bed and she manages to pull herself back up. She really has a surprising amount of strength in that little body. Her face is turned downwards away from mine, making me think I might have accidentally hurt her. Emmy, you okay? And hits her. A hand shoots up and grabs my collar. She pulls me in with a sharp tug. Her face now barely an inch away from mine, and she grins cheekily. Emmy, hey, Emmy, please put the strap on down. <laughs> At least use lube. She, she headbutted gives, him, didn't she? She gives me a sharp headbutt. Our foreheads making quite a loud thud. I sit back and rub my now sore head as Emmy smirks victoriously. How's that for revenge? No fair! You can't take revenge for revenge! For someone missing most of her legs, Emmy's surprisingly agile. I swipe for her, but she definitely rolls out of the way and, la and lands a hit with her pillow. Of course, the odds are against her. I can stand up, for starters. Oof! Uh... I guess I can't, after all. Emmy seems to have effectively they tripped me up and is now sitting primely astride me as I, as I lay on my back. I'm not even sure how she managed it. I win! Her eyes twinkle mischievously. I've been thoroughly defeated by a girl that's a fraction of my size of that. Then again, being <laughs> defeated doesn't seem quite so bad. Emmy being positioned over my waist isn't something that I or my body can ignore easily. I open my lips to speak, but Emmy's head darts turns downwards before I can get so much as a word out. Oh, we're gonna have to skip another part. Hold on, hold on, give it a second. Let's, All right. Uh, I give I have no resistance as she presses her mouth to mine. Not that I'd want to. This is different somehow. She pulls back. Called, nip, called a French kiss. <laughs> nips out of my lower lip and re and reinitiates the embrace. Her tongue darts inside my mouth, exploring. I can feel warmth spreading through my body as my heart begins to beat faster. My my mind starts to go foggy, 
and I become vaguely aware of my hand traveling up Emmy's blouse. Emmy gasps as I reach her breast, and there's a giggle, and then I stare up at a grinning, grinning Emmy. Told you, that makes my second win now. What? Well, that doesn't count. You can't use feminine wiles. I was fair in love and war, right? <laughs> You're even blushing. Didn't know you were a blusher, Hassal. You were blushing too, you know. Well, because of your prudish ways. Even I have to admit this is a stupid thing to say to a woman who is currently straddling me and has been, up until a few seconds ago, playing tonsil hockey with me. <laughs> oh. A prude, am I? Well then, let's see who blushes first, shall we? I'm not sure whether the tone of her voice terrifies or arouses me. That question is quickly made rather moot. Oh god, okay! So how many? So Emmy has the most. How many in total does she have? Like three or four, or something. I don't know. Okay. Like this is technically the first. Then there's one where they, like, have penetrative sex, and then there's another one where they do anal. Okay. So, but still, she has the most. Okay. Yeah. Which is why she's the canon love interest. No, why I feel like she's the best fit for a canon love interest. Well, yeah, that's what I was referring to. He said the canon one is if this game had a fucking sequel. Oh, shit! Dude, get in here right now. Yeah, I'm here. I see it. Ren. <clears throat> I need to use your window. I'll just, uh, censor it. Yeah. Yeah, please do. Yeah, I'll just leave it censored. My first instinct is to hide, but then I realize that I'm still utterly exhausted and sitting next to a topless Emmy, so there's no running away. Rin's eyes pass over Emmy and me and focus on the window. There was a cloud. A cloud? God damn it, Rin, you fucking clam jammer. <laughs> <laughs> Rin nods. I was watching it from my window, but it didn't stay in my window. Oh my god. <laughs> so I need to use your window. Emmy shifts a little, causing me to cough in order to cover up a giggle on my own. Are you oh. seriously watching porn by yourself? <laughs> no! I'm with the science team! <laughs> <laughs> How long do you need the window for? We're, uh, busy. This time I can't contain my laughter. <laughs> Rin ignores both Emmy and me and peers out the window. Her shoulders slump and she looks disappointed. Hmm. Mm. It changed into something else. Disappointing. Emmy's oh yeah. Oh yeah, because Rin's the definition of I don't like change. Uh, Emmy is having trouble keeping a straight face. Uh, sorry to hear that, Ren. Can we have a little privacy now, please? Ren shrugs as just to say, can you? And hooks her foot around the door, pulling it closed behind her. Mm. They both dissolve into raucous laughter, unable to deal with Ren's bizarrely timed visit any other way. When our laughter dies down, I look at Emmy, and we're both a total mess. Well... Emmy raises an eyebrow. Well? Again? Emmy grins and laughs, and then she nods. We should probably ditch the clothes this time. And cut again, motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> oh. I guess it's not leading to that. Oh. Well, the game cut for us. Nice. The sunlight breaks through my window shortly before my alarm and ruins the morning silence. I feel sore. The events of the previous evening suddenly intrude upon my consciousness, and I find myself blushing. That was an eventful evening, and explains perfectly the soreness in my lower back. The walk back, as I recall, had been rather tense. Hey. My, tr my trousers, having been soiled... I had washed them off in the bathroom before going back to my room. But there's still a fairly obvious looking stain on the front. 
fortunately for me, the only person I ran into on my way back was Kenji. <laughs> and he didn't notice a okay. thing, thankfully. Well, apart from me being in, from, from my being in the general vicinity. Of course, he'd ask how the night went, whether or not I learned anything of importance. I don't even know if I opened my mouth to answer. I was too tired to care. And this morning, I'll admit I'm feeling pretty worn out. Still, Emmy had promised to meet me at the track, and I'd hate to disappoint. I know she, she didn't disappoint last hey, night. Hey, oh! She was indeed waiting for me when I arrived. Oh, I bet you did. <laughs> Doing her best to, to look cheery, despite the fact that she's sitting in a wheelchair. I waved to her and began stretching. You're early. Emmy fr uh, and shakes her head. Hold on. There's like a set of lyrics I need to find and sing. What? Alright. Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> hold on, what the... No, no don't do... What the fuck song lyrics? What are you doing? While we're waiting on Thomas, fun fact, did you know that, well, did you know that hedgehogs can't really talk and don't eat chili dogs? Oh Turns God. out they're not even best friends with, well, <laughs> they're not even best friends with foxes. Turns out foxes actually eat them. Yeah. Also, when they run really fast, they eat, they, they, they shit. So Sonic should technically be shitting his pants. Why won't it show me the damn lyrics? What song are you looking for? I'm looking for Stucky and Murray's Awkward Sex. Oh. Shouldn't Google just give you the lyrics normally, like it does with every song? That should just give ah! you the song no that should just give you the lyrics normally. I don't know, because it shows me the lyrics for like two seconds, and then it... Cutting. I just had sex, and it failed so good. Alright, I'm sending you a link to it. There. Yeah, this is the exact one I'm on right now. And it's not showing you the lyrics? No, it's like, it is, and then it's like, for some reason, like, the page just, like, skips to, like, I don't know, the bottom of the page just becomes the whole page. I don't know how to describe it. Mm. I don't know, there's lyrics in there about being in a wheelchair. Why don't you do it, if you can see it? I don't know how the song goes, and I've never listened to it once. <laughs> Okay, fine. I'll just link to the lyrics in the bottom. Everybody, you'll know the lyrics by, by then. Emmy frowns and shakes her head. Ridiculous. You're late. Overslept his out? Well, tuckered out? Well, at least she seems more like her old self. And as expected, she doesn't seem to be shy of mentioning our previous activities. Hey, you're lucky I could show up at all. All that cardiovascular activity last night. I thought I'd... I thought I'd have to see the nurse afterwards. Mm. <laughs> Death by Snoo Snoo. Yeah. Emmy laughs out loud, then her face suddenly becomes concerned. That's not, uh, I mean, you're not, go on, spit it out. It'd just be hard to explain if you had an episode while we were, oh. Oh. Now that you mention it, it really is a legitimate concern. I really haven't thought of it last night. Of course, other more pressing concerns had been in hand. Or two. Hmm. Well, I don't think anything we uh, do is going to be any more strained than these morning runs. And I handle those fine, so Emmy considers this point. 
And then she suddenly turns into Dio Brando. Then theme. Oh really? That's the only theme I remember from JoJo. I don't know how to do Dio's theme. You thought you gave your virginity to the cute little girl. Yeah, to the cute anime girl with the big ass. But it was I, Dio! Dio the, Brando. <laughs> the cutest anime girl with the biggest ass. Dio does have a pretty big ass, though. Dio, so, Jonathan, I shall become the cutest anime girl, and I will th- defeat all of the waifus. Yeah, and then I will attain a form over heaven! A devious light appears in her eyes. Say. The light vanishes and Emmy grins ruefully at me. I can't help but feel vaguely suspicious. I seem to have forgotten a pair of gloves. What do you need gloves for? Emmy indicates the chair in which she is seated. For this, of course. Sure, regular moving around is all well and good without him, but I want to be able to get a good workout. And to get that kind of speed, you gotta have gloves if you don't want blisters. So, so what? Are you wussing out of me then? Do I have to go it alone? Emmy thinks for a minute, or pretends to think. Hmm, if I remember right, there's a spirit, a pair or two in the track shed. So she does seriously want to do it then. Oh boy. But in her normal school uniform? I'm expecting her to wear her gym outfit for something like this. Wait, what are they doing there? I mean, it looks askance at me. Sal, have you never seen a freaking hentai where they do it in the goddamn broom closet? Eh. God, I told you, dude. Like, okay, if we're getting back-to-back hentai scenes, holy shit. Seriously, you can't think of why a school shed full of track supplies at a school for the disabled would have racing gloves. Well, when she puts it that way, I suppose it makes perfect sense. Hey, I'm still getting used to this place. Give me a break, huh? I guess I can let it slide this time while you slide in and out. (laughs) (laughs) Now, come on. I'll need your help. I can't imagine what for, but then again, I didn't have a clue why racing gloves would be in the shed, so I'm not willing to press the issue. Emmy investigates her way to the shed easily enough, though I can hear her grumbling under her breath. It's actually kind of cute. Hurry a little and reach the door first. Opening it will be easier for me than her. The door whip opens and Emmy starts to wheel inside, only to come to a sudden halt at the doorway. It seems the door sill is slightly too high. I had to get over by herself. Allow me, my lady. She makes a few runs at it, unsuccessfully, before closing her eyes and glaring at the offending object. Stupid wheelchair. Sal, can you give me a hand here? Sure, no problem. Simple enough matter for me to bump Emmy over the doorway, jostling her slightly. Oh, easy there. Oh, sorry. It's about this time I fail to notice where I'm going and run into Emmy's chair into a mat. She gives a startled yelp and topples forward out of her chair. There's a moment of silence that I gaze in horror upon what I've done and Emmy glares at me. Is Sal? Yes. Promise you, you'll never work at a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to. Emmy giggles and holds up a hand. Would you kindly help me get back to my chair, Mr. Sal? As I bend down to pick Emmy up, she grins in triumph and pulls me into a kiss that quickly has us both entirely unconcerned about getting her back into the chair. In fact, as I move into a more comfortable position, I confess that the chair is pushed out the door, which, started by the passage, swings shut. Okay, again. Yeah. And while that's going on, I'm about to beat the shit out of Martin Lee and Spider Man. I thought you were playing Crash Bandicoot. I got pissed off because I can't because I kept missing boxes. <laughs> yeah, you kept getting freaking back shots from those boxes. That doesn't make any sense. Well, while Crash is getting back shots from the boxes, his house is giving back shots to Emmy's box. <laughs> Well, that, and technically, Crash would be getting... Okay, do you ship Crash with the new Tana? Or do you think, you know, Insomniac should just stop being pussies and bring back old Tana? No, it should have been me. 
Okay, but in all seriousness. I honestly don't care which. Okay. I do try. Oh. Okay, okay, there's some reading shit going on. Really? Having, having pulled back, I decided instead to focus my attention on her breasts. When she attempts to speak, her words are interspersed with giggles for what I found incredibly cute. I mean, she doesn't actually wear gloves. Oh, I thought she was going to talk about the freaking uh, track captain real quick. Okay. Oh my god! Holy crap! Lemon. I just looked lemon flavored. Lemon flavored. Wait, why would there be lube in here? Uh, I think you know why. No, I mean, like, for the sake of the scene, I understand, but, like, realistically, who would leave lemon flavored lube in the freaking, in, like, storage closet? Uh. Unless there were other people getting freaky in here. Maybe Mudo? Put my money on Mudo. I'm thinking it might be the track captain and his boyfriend. Oh. It might be theirs. Wait, what? Somehow, I don't think this... This... This is... This isn't track related. Oh, man, I know who that is. What? It's the track captains. I was right. Ah, uh, my old nemesis. Or kind of... I didn't know it's his. Okay, I'm gonna have to like skip over to this part, or right, though. No, I'll still keep it censored, but like just so the audience knows the joke I'm using. Because he's the one who told me the track shed was a good place for what do you call them? Clandestine encounters. Clandestine. What is he a fucking Britishman? Something. Oh, he invite you to one or something? Emmy bursts into moral after. I give us the sight of a naked Emmy laughing is oddly beautiful. I feel an eagerness to end the conversation and get back to what we were doing, despite my rather pointed questioning. It's how the track captain's gay. Huh? Really? And here initially I thought you two were a couple. Well, I did have a crush on him when I first joined up, but he wasn't interested. Obviously. We are good friends, I guess. I mean, he told me about all this, you know. I hesitate to ask. And really, I do, but I ask anyway. But what does he need for the, uh, lube anyway? I mean, he doesn't, uh... How the hell does Emmy always his manage not to blush? Obviously, he uses it for, you know, anal. <laughs> I try to suppress a snicker and fail. Emmy's giggling, too. And he tells you all about this. <laughs> Emmy shrugs. Yeah, of course. He's kind of wild about the whole thing. Says the feeling that can't be beat. Uh huh. The air in the track shed seems charged with some kind of horrible curiosity. That's interesting. Cut again! <laughs> this is gonna be the shortest episode ever. <laughs> oh my god. That hurt at the end. Yeah, I, uh, this is probably not a great idea. He squirms in order to try and sit down beside me without too much pain. Oh my god, and she's stuck in a wheelchair, I just realized. Oh no. Dude, we, she's stuck in a wheelchair for the next couple of weeks, and we just did anal on her, and she didn't like it. Oh no. Oh We're no. That again. We're never getting that. Until she gets her That's legs back. Yeah, that's going to be saved to our wedding night. Yeah. But we aren't even married. So, HJ or anal. <laughs> Jonathan, my loins. 
Beans are a flame for your twelve year old gentlemanly spotted dick. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have words with the captain. He was clearly lying. The utter and absolute ridiculousness of the situation suddenly hits and I begin laughing. Emmy shakes her head and begins laughing with me. Hey, Hassal? Yeah? We're never doing this again, right? Yeah, I think my curiosity is satisfied on this one. Emmy nods, satisfied. Good. I think maybe we should stick to the basics, you know? I mean, most of this is new to me anyway. What do you mean, most? Emmy grins impishly. I'll never tell. An unpleasant thought strikes me. Even more unpleasant than the thought of having to ask Emmy about it. Still, after what we've just done, it should be a cakewalk. Hey, is there a sink? I kind of like to uh, wash off a little. Emmy's jaw drops. In the sink? Well, there's not exactly anywhere else to do it, is there? And uh, I want to avoid the smell. That nurse might notice. This is the most awkward conversation I've ever had. You're right. There's, uh... It's on the back wall. There might be some soap, too. He's gonna use fucking hand soap on his dick! Looks like a little hand soap, which is better than nothing. No towel, though. Guess I'll have to drip dry. He's gonna have to helicopter that thing. I'll finish. Mm. Yeah, it'll do for now. It's not like I'm gonna take a shower after we see the nurse. Glad to hear it. Now help me find my clothes. Toss them somewhere. Hey, you know better. How am I supposed to explain the hole in my shirt, hmm? Sorry, I got a little excited earlier. Take some time. We're both more or less clothed. There's a frantic moment where, right, where neither of us knows where Emmy's wheelchair is, but I recall it going through the door and rescue it. Now be more careful going through the door this time, would you? Bumps are not my friend right now. I'm so sorry we tried this. Emmy shrugs and grins. Well, it was sort of worth a shot, right? And anyway, it was good exercise, right? Can't argue that. <laughs> As we make our way up to the nurse's office, I notice that Emmy keeps shifting uncomfortably in her seat. God, this feels weird. Good thing I'm in a wheelchair, Sal. Why's that? Because now I don't have to explain to the nurse why I'm walking funny. Oh. <laughs> We're never doing this again. <laughs> The nurse is at least kind enough to not comment on the marks that Emmy left on my shoulders. Nor does he say a word about em Emmy's confident ship shifting about in her wheelchair. Either he didn't notice, or he didn't want to notice. All the same, I'm going to have to make sure he doesn't slip cyanide into my medication for a while. Just to be safe. I shower for longer than usual, just to be sure I clean out our I'm clean of our little experiment, and then collapse on my bed. Class in 20 minutes, so I can barely afford a nap. Yeah, barely. Oh. Ah, oh, fuck. Thought... That better not be Kenji. It's it's not gonna transition. Knock knock. Who's there? Knock knock. That's not how the joke goes at all. I already said who's there. More importantly, what time is it? More importantly, what day? I'm suddenly catapulted into wakefulness by both the fact that the knocking still hasn't stopped and the fact that it's noon. Ah, he missed. Oh boy. He missed class. Now I'm fully, yeah. I'm fully awake. I can remember why I was napping. Better not give that excuse to Mudo. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, my girlfriend. Uh, we tried anal for the first time. Did not like it. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't in class. I was experimenting sexually with my girlfriend, and it tired me out. Yeah, that'll go over well. <laughs> I wonder how long this knocking is gonna continue. Guess I would answer the door. Ah, it's you. What in the fuck are you doing, Hisao? Why are you fraternizing with those women creatures? Twice even. You've okay. even managed to lose your virginity? How fucking dare you betray me, you goddamn pussy boy? He lost his virginity <laughs> twice and tried anal. Oh, uh, so... <laughs> The story of how I lost my virginity <laughs> twice. How dare you? We were brothers. Brother, help me. Long live the king. Ah! <laughs> I'm strangely surprised to see Kenji on the other side. Though it appears that Kenji is surprised to see me. 
What the hell are you doing here, man? Well, I was sleeping. Kenji nods in understanding. Knocked out, I see. Yeah, after we yeah, after we got Emmy knocked up. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, though. I told you to be careful around that Ibarazaki chick, man. This is the sort of thing that happens when you aren't cautious! Yeah, apparently anal actually isn't all that fun. No, not no, it isn't. <laughs> he makes an attempt to look at the back of my head. Did she hit you with something? Yeah, her back. Her back of that ass. <laughs> yeah! Or was it a drug? I mean, some people think of sex like a drug. I'm addicted to it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop trying to touch me. Kenji produces a flashlight and shines it in my eyes. You got a concussion? Fuck! What? I read your line. You got a concussion? I wasn't knocked out. Maybe you just don't remember. Uh, this conversation isn't going anywhere. No, I just had a tiring morning and I fell asleep. Mm, whatever, man. <clears throat> if you want to be in denial about this, I guess I can't stop you. However, but you gotta watch out for that girl, man. She's not safe. Not safe for work, you mean? <laughs> what? Uh, she's not safe to be around. She's one of their most sinister agents. Dude, we how had fucking sex. <laughs> God, how fucking hilarious would it be if it was revealed that Kenji was secretly right this whole time? Oh god! Like just no. imagining that shit would be the funniest fucking thing ever. And it turns out, I mean, he's like, so we've all deemed that you are the only man worth sparing, so we can use you for breeding. And that's how I was just like, <laughs> okay, I guess I'm cool with it. <laughs> you guys aren't gonna siphon it out. We're gonna do things the old-fashioned way. Oh yeah, we're not that cruel. Oh sweet. So Kenji, turns out that the breeding part's actually a lot of fun. I apologize no. for everything I ever said. Uh, Kenji immediately it. apologizes for everything he ever said. Like it's gonna get him some. Yeah. Oh boy. If you're not careful, there's no telling what could happen. She's gonna end up pregnant. She brought down stronger men than you, you know. What the hell are you talking about? She's not Kenji. Kenji, we both know you're not stronger than me. <laughs> you can't even break two spaghetti noodles in half. <laughs> she's not an agent of anything, and she didn't knock me out, okay? I also highly doubt she's brought down anyone at all. Kenji looks almost offended. I have no idea why. Eh... You don't believe me? That's cold, man. Real cold. Oh, shut up, Harry Potter. <laughs> he does look like Harry Potter without the scar. Yeah, like, didn't we say that? Didn't I say that in the first episode, or like when we first started reading this, that he just looks like a Japanese Harry Potter? I think we, I think we did. Yeah, like, that's kind of what you get when you have a guy with glasses, shaggy black hair, and a red and yellow scarf. Mm. He looks like fucking Harry... Daniel Radcliffe as Kenji in the live action version when? <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> like, well, I mean, like, well, aside from the whitewashing. Please, no. Okay, if I ever get someone to do a comic dub of this with me, I'm gonna get someone who can do a Daniel Radcliffe impression, but they have to do a Daniel Radcliffe with an American accent. So just Daniel Radcliffe with a bad American accent? Yeah. So that's just Daniel Radcliffe. It's about your cousin, and she's my cousin. It's like incest. No, it's not my cousin. Yeah, but you're like my brother. Ask my advice on how to incestuously bang my cousin. Jesus Christ, where the hell is this going? Oh, no, that's like from like the first thing I ever heard Adam Driver in when I heard he was confirmed as Kylo Ren. It's like I started looking up some of his roles, and then that I've just had sex. I'm about to eat nachos thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I need to watch that whole movie. It's a pretty good movie. Yeah. At least that's what I heard. Yeah. 
Also, I'm gonna like throw the I just had sex. I'm about to eat nachos line and th- into one of my stories. Like maybe after Garth and Ruby do it for the first time, I mean Ellis is like. I'm is probably like, gonna throw that in Unity Warrior somewhere. Uh, Garth, what? Are you okay, man? I just had sex and I'm about to eat nachos. It's the greatest day of my life. Unless you're about to spoil it with whatever you're about to say. So um, Meh. uh, it's about. Yang, this is starting to feel it's like about... no, no. He's talking to fucking uh, no, 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 not Ellis to Vladik. It's about your sister. She's my sister, dude. What the fuck are you asking? Is this some incest stuff? She's not my sister. Yeah, but you're my friend, so and that kind of makes you my brother. And asking my advice on how to bang my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I should probably be more mad about this in the first place because she's my fucking sister, man. You know, actually, no, she's older than me. She gets to make her own decisions. Yeah. If she likes you, she'll be the one smashing you, not the other way around. <laughs> hey, don't fuck with Ryuka, man. She was broken better men than you. I'm just trying to look out for you. That's what friends do, you know? We're friends? I had no idea. Then again, I wonder if Kenji knows what being friends even entails. I feel something like pity for him standing there before me. Maybe he does here, I, I realize you were just like me. Tried to, Try make, to it make history. history. But who's to judge the right from wrong? When our God is down, I think we'll both agree that violence, violence breeds, breeds violence. violence. But in the it, end, it, it, has, it to has to be this, this way. way. For the longest time, I thought that was actually the theme for um, uh, Senator Armstrong. It kind of is. But it's actually Raiden's theme for that game. Yeah, which is why when I first fucking played it, I thought it was Senator Armstrong's theme. Cause, no, Collective know. Consciousness is his theme. Yeah. And I just unlocked Pikachu and Smash Brothers while we're recording this. Wait a second, it, t- it took you this long to unlock Pikachu? I just got the game a little while ago, and I'm playing through the World of Light to unlock all the characters. And Sorry. no, I'm not buying any of the damn DLC, I'm broke. Well, not right now. I actually, like, um... Yeah, that was, like, the first... Like, Smash Ultimate was, like, the first game I had for my Switch. And I spent, like, the first two days I owned it trying to go through World of Light long enough in order to beat it. I sometimes play, pick it back up again whenever new DLC comes out, or just to play it whenever I'm bored. I thought the next Smash game needs to be the perfect single-player Smash game, since we already have the perfect multiplayer one. Yeah. Um, but I think I've said that before. Yeah, we need some, something like Subspace Emissary back. Yeah. Just give us a full game of Subspace Emissary. Or how about, um, like, if they ever update it again, why not just add that in as, like, a free DLC? Boom. Yeah, World of Light as a proper her story mode instead of it just being like, I don't know, a challenge mode or something. Which I really, which again, I really hope, dude, I keep forgetting who it was who said it, but said the reason why we don't have like a full single player mode is because all the cutscenes got uploaded online. Which is stupid. That's a dumb reason not to, not to make art. What, all two cutscenes? Yeah, like here's a, like that's the thing. Like that's like saying you're not gonna paint something because someone's just gonna take a picture of it and post it on Instagram. Like, dumbass, that's not a good reason not to make art. <laughs> I mean, because people still need to pay for the game. Exactly. Yeah, I know, I know. Sorry about that. Thanks for the warning. I hold up my hand as a sign of peace. Kenji shakes it gingerly, like my hand could possibly be on fire. It is an Although he's silence. not even a ginger. <laughs> That'd be funnier if he was. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> Harry <would> Weasley. <laughs> There's an awkward silence for a few mm-hmm. seconds where Kenji remembers that he's still shaking my hand. Anyway, I need a favor. What kind of favor? I'm out of money. No, you aren't. You've got money kept in your desk drawer under the black notebook for emergencies. Did you ransack my room? That's not important. What's important? I don't need money anyway. He adopts a very serious tone. I'm about to undertake a major operation. 
It'll blow the whole conspiracy wide open if I'm right. But it's dangerous, so I need you to do something for me, in case I don't come back. Uh, sure, man. Anything? <laughs> what the hell is he planning on doing? I should be t should I be telling something about this? I'm gonna rattle the cages. If I go missing, wait three days, and then mail my journal off to newspapers. It's hidden in my room under a false bottom in one of the desk drawers. How do I get into your room? I don't have a key. Kenji looks at me like I'm crazy. So pick the lock. You know how to do that, right? It's an important skill to learn at a young age. Especially if you're gonna shoot a man before throwing him out of a plane. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course I know how. I'll be sure to uh, do that for you if you go missing. I don't think I want to read Kenji's journal. It's probably just filled of t it's probably just filled with stick people of giant tits and giant dicks fucking each other. <laughs> Either way, Kenji seems pretty happy that I've agreed to do this for thing for him. I've seen I've actually seen stick figure hentai before. Yeah, it's a real thing, unfortunately. Yeah, but like great, the one, man, great. Yeah, but like the one I saw was like stomach like deformation stickman hentai. Oh. Which I think is the only way to do it, really. Well, it happened. Would it, it wouldn't happen to have been created by the eighth individual with minus in their name, would it? I don't know. Okay. I don't remember, but like it was based on dick figures, so. Yeah, that. Yeah, we're thinking of the same thing. Okay. I oh, love boy. that. I love that show, man. It's fucking hilarious, and I really hope it comes back. French cuisine, you're so cultural. Gracias. You're gracias. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, slay want to reach out blue, to the creators. Dude, blue stick guy is just Brian Griffin if he was a decent human being. Exactly. <laughs> oh my god, I love I both love him basically, and I hate him. So basically seasons one through three, Brian Griffin. Yeah. And Red is the greatest human being who ever lived. Yeah. Anyway, I'll see you around. I got stuff to do. And he's gone. <laughs> Just turned Kenji into Batman. <laughs> he's gone, dashing down the hallway. Hey, Naruto running down the hallway. <laughs> the Kenji would totally fucking Naruto run. Mm. He made it seem so final. I hope I have to carry out his final wishes. Shaking my head, I close my door and back and, and walk back to my bed. Guess I should go to class if only to catch the last of half of the day. I've come this far without going to class today. And I did and I did want to read more of that Hawking book Mudo lent me. I'm sure he'll I mean it's I mean it's the day I mean it's the tomorrow, not the Oh for fuck's sake, who is it now? The who could of, it be? The sound of the noise jerks my attention away from my book. Experience not unlike being woken up. Who's there? Me? Aren't you glad? The voice is muffled through the door, but unmistakably Emmys. I hop up and open the door, smiling broadly. Hey, nice to see you again. Emmy grins back, staring up at me from her wheelchair. Yeah, you could have seen me earlier, but the damned elevator wasn't working. I had to wait for them to fix it. You think they could... You think they could keep it in better order, but no. I chuckled a bit in a vexed expression and invite her in. She wheels in easily, and with my help, she hops onto my bed. There, much more comfortable than that stupid chair. A sigh of contentment hangs in the air, and for a minute we both just stare at one another. It's mm -hmm. at this point that I notice the circles under Emmy's eyes. Not that dark, but they definitely weren't there before. Before I can ask about them, Emmy fixes me with a mischievous stare. So, I couldn't help but notice you weren't at lunch today. In fact, I don't think I saw you at all. What happened? Hmm. Fell asleep. I actually didn't wake up until lunch, but only then because Kenji woke me up. What had you so tired? Hmm. Strenuous workout this morning? Slightly uncomfortable, too. Emmy coughs, half laughing, half, half laughing, half embarrassed noise. <laughs> Remind me not to do that again. No problem. Wasn't exactly great for me either, to be honest. We'll just avoid that from now on. Are you, uh, still sore? Emmy stares at me in disbelief. 
Well, it's a legit question. All the questions I have never thought I'd be asked, this was one of them. Well, I didn't ever expect to have to ask it, so we're even. Emmy laughs at this. <laughs> I guess so, huh? Well, since you asked, yeah, I'm still a little sore. We're never doing that again. No arguments from here. There, a yawn escapes her, and I raise an eyebrow. Tired? I mean, nod sleepily. I haven't slept in a while. I haven't slept well. I'm not sleeping well. I could tell that she didn't mean to tell me this either because she gives a little start like she's been caught lying and hastens to add. It's not a big deal, though. What's the trouble? I mean, shrugs and refuses to elaborate. Stress over exams? Or shrug, but after a pause, I mean, nods hesitantly. Yeah, I guess. And actually, that's why I stopped by. She begins to look more and more miserable. Not so you notice, of course, but her eyes are on her lap. She's fidgeting and her voice is quiet. We, uh... We need to stop hanging out so much. Oh, why? The fuck? Emmy takes a deep breath like she's been practicing this. Because you're too much fun to be around. And I that don't make no damn sense. I can't concentrate on you. Dude, it's a classic plot line. They have sex far too often and it's affecting their grades. I can't concentrate when you're near me. Exam's coming up soon. I just can't have that distraction. Otherwise, my grades will be pretty lousy, I'm afraid. I could help you study. He smiles at me, clearly unhappy with the situation. I'd love it if you could, but we wouldn't actually study, would we? I mean, even now, I'm trying to have a conversation with you, and I kind of just want to, uh... Not converse. Uh, overwhelmed by my rugged manliness, I understand. <laughs> That earns me a grin, at least. Emmy shakes her head. Idiot, you're full of yourself. Well, I am pretty irresistible. More or less, I guess. So that's the situation, Sal. I have too much fun around you, and if I'm gonna go to exams prepared, I need to be alone. <laughs> hey, that's okay. Really seems to have been bothering her. Besides, it's only a couple of weeks. We'll still see each other in the mornings and at lunch. We can just hang out at school, no problem. And after exams, we'll go on a date to celebrate their being over, okay? Emmy grins, pleased by the proposal. Yeah, sure, sounds great. To signal the end of the conversation, she leans in and kisses me. The rest of the night is spent not worrying about exams. Do, 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 do. It's weird how easily Emmy and I can keep from seeing one another after class now. Actually, mm. I venture to say that's vaguely disturbing. As easily as we come together, we seem to have split apart without much trouble. Well, I guess that's not exactly true. We've both be pr been pretty bummed after last night together. I mean, got to see each other every morning for our runs, not just and just our runs, I might add. Lunch too, I especially enjoy lunchtime with her. We have plenty of time to talk about everything outside of school, whereas the morning runs have become increasingly businesslike. I think it's because Emmy wants to make up for our foolery in the storage shed. But no matter how much we joke at lunch, I can't help feeling a little worried about her. She seems distracted more often, and I've caught her fidgeting nervously more than once. Never figured her to be someone who cared that deeply about exams, but they certainly seem to be taking their toll. Even though they haven't even started. This is just the run up, a deep breath before the plunge. Tomorrow the real trials begin. Or the real exams anyway as for me I'm I actually don't feel that worried about exams at all I'm not sure why I mean they're pretty important my scores here will determine my odds of getting into a good university <sighs> hell if I'm too cavalier now it could spell doom for my academic career but going into them I feel confident that I'll come out on the other side okay Moto thinks I've gotten the science examination locked up at any rate or as he says, the last thing you, the last thing you should g give you any trouble is my exam, Sal. It's way beneath your talents. Then again, mm. it is Mudo who's telling me this. His praise of me carries the veiled implication that anything less than perfect for me would be a disappointment, which has actually caused me to fret more than I should about the exam. It's for that reason I find myself in the library after class, poring over the textbook. 
Pretty simple things to look over. Some formulas, velocity, a few bits about friction. Walk in the park compared to my dreaded English exam. Never was good with languages. So I flip through my notes one more time, my mind begins to wander. After these exams are over, things should get easier. Soon we'll be graduated, and off to college, hopefully. I remember my abortive attempt to find, a, find out what Emmy plans to do after high school. <laughs> she avoided the subject pretty deftly, as I recall. Heck, it seems that just about every time I push too hard, she dances around the subject, or distracts me through other means. Like when Rin... What the hell is that noise? What are you talking about? I heard a crackling noise. Yeah, that's a ceiling fan. Like a few yeah, days... Yeah, it's gonna... It's gonna crush me in my sleep one day. Don't worry about it. Like a few days ago at lunch, when Ren wasn't around. <laughs> I've done it! I'm startled from my reverie made by Yuko's triumphant shout. Ah! Yuko seems mortified by my sudden staring. Oh my god! I'm so sorry! I just got... I really wasn't... It's just that... As she stutters, I move quickly to calm her down before she gets too agitated. Whoa! Hey! My words seem ineffective. Yuko continues to work herself into a complete frenzy. It's the library and I shouldn't be easy there. Just calm down. I'm really setting a bad example and now I'll get fired because I can't do anything right. You go! Shouting seems to work, though I draw the, uh, the ire of several other students studying in the library. Yuko snaps to attention just like a soldier who's just heard the captain bark an order. Sorry, sorry. Calm down, it's okay. You just startled me a little. It's only because I was daydreaming instead of studying. So really, you got me back on task. This is a complete lie, but it seems to work. Yuko takes a deep breath and seems to calm down a little. Though she keeps shifting around with a nervous energy that seems awfully familiar. So what's got you so excited anyway? The Yamaku Cat Burglar. To her credit, Yuko manages to convey her intense excitement in a whisper. I think I know who it is. I got an anonymous tip as to their identity. So I did some spying, and I think the tipster was right. Really? And who was this, uh, burglar? Yuko shuts her mouth, shaking her head decisively. Nope, I can't tell you that. Why not? It's between me and the burglar. Can't risk you warning him that I'm on his game. He could easily tip his hand early and be, and be bl and blow town. Then I'm left with no perp. When did Yuko start talking like a hard-boiled detective? I wouldn't warn them. Why would I care? If you She's been that, watching a lot of Law and Order. Yeah. Oh, good. I like CSI. If you've got to ask that question, then you don't need to know. That doesn't make any sense, but okay. Congratulations, I guess. Thanks. Uh, what for? The uh, cat burglar thing? Yuko nods and smiles appreciatively. So, studying for exams? Well, that was the plan. I'm not having much luck, though. Really? Because you can't find a book? I'm really sorry. I've been meaning to clear up the shelves for weeks now, but I keep getting distracted. I'm so sorry. Oh, wait. It's not that. I've got my book right here. To illustrate the point, I carefully cal hopefully calm Yuko down. I show her the textbook in front of me. But my eyes just keeps wandering, is all. Is it because of the noise in here? I'm trying to be more strict about the noise level, but I can't bring myself to yell at people. I mean, aren't their lives hard enough without me throwing my authority around? No, it's not the noise either. I, it's not the noise either, I promise. I'm just... Hell, I don't know. Worried about Emmy? Worried about us? Worried about what happens after we graduate? I've been thinking about us, think about me, think about you, what we gonna be. I opened my eyes, and it was only just a dream. What song is that? I, I, I remember that. Just a dream, just a dream by Nelly. Oh, I'm gonna pull that up real quick. I thought that was a fucking Justin Bieber song. I swear. <laughs> it kind of sounds like a Justin Bieber song. Oh, it was by the guy who made who made right there. Yeah. 
Cause I traveled back down that road Will she come back? No one knows I opened my eyes It was only just a dream kind of weird lately What do you mean? Well, you know how we're dating now? I don't know what we're I just don't know that we're actually You know A couple Or at least I don't know that we're beyond friends That's how you're overthinking it yeah, no, though friends normally don't do the sort of things we do. Physically, we're just a couple. Coupling, at least. It's like every time I try to find out more about her or about what she wants to do with her life, she dodges the question. Like the other day, I was talking to her at lunch it's about some schools I've been looking into, and I asked her, have you looked into any schools lately? She shrugs in response, says no, and when I asked why not, she says she doesn't think that far ahead. I asked why she had that policy, and she... Suddenly I came to realize what I'm about to start right, describing and wisely decided to clam up. And then she reached under the table and started extro and started yanking on my fucking dick. <laughs> she what? Uh, she changed the subject. Wouldn't talk about it. Maybe it's an uncomfortable subject for her? Or maybe she just doesn't think it needs explaining. Yeah, but it's not just that. Every time I try to find out what's been bothering her, she changes the subject, too. It's like she likes being with me, but not getting close to me. Now that I've said it out loud, I feel worse. You could digest this bit of information. You know, it seems to me like you're more serious about this than she is. I feel my stomach twist into a knot. She's right. That's exactly what it seems like. But this is what's really going on. But is that what's really going on? I mean... Sorry, I was just talking nonsense. I shouldn't... You shouldn't take my advice. You barely know me. I'm just a librarian. I'm single, so I can't... So you can imagine I can't know what I'm talking about. No, I think... I think you have a point. Plus it hurts to even consider it. Yuko seems to try desperately to find a way to soften the blow somewhat. Uh, look... I'm probably wrong, but if you want to be sure how obviously wrong I am, maybe you should just talk to her? Get some time alone and just ask about it. And don't let her change the subject either. Yeah. Maybe I should do that. Or maybe I should. So you like this girl, right? You wanna hold her? Uh, yes! You wanna please her? Yes! Then you got to, got to try a little tenderness! Just yeah. love that romantic crap! <laughs> Maybe should, I should just enjoy what I have. I'm gonna have Ellis say that to Garth when he's like, "Oh God, I have a crush on Ruby. You want to you you want to cherish her? Yeah, please, huh? Yeah. I mean, like I do have a couple of Shrek references in the story anyway. I mean, like the first song that I play is fucking Fairy Tale from Shrek One. You know, uh, the yeah. opening theme. The DreamWorks Wait, I, theme? Oh, that. Okay, because I'm about to say, isn't the opening theme, like, all-star? But no. no, you're right. No, the orchestral song that plays before that. Oh, yeah. And it's meant to be ironic because Garth starts describing some really violent events while this, like, this muse, this whimsical fairy tale music starts playing. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, he's like, my family got screwed over, my cousin drowned, my mom was fucking decapitated, I was heavily traumatized by the event. My arms are cut off. My legs were cut off. Just describing fucking urban... Just describing an episode of Urban Spook. Yeah. Uh, we have fun hanging out after all. And the runs are nice. And the other activities are nice. And talking to her is nice. Do I really need to get closer to her? What I've got right now is pretty good. But that's silly. I want to get closer to her. I want to be able to help her out with whatever is bothering her. But maybe I should wait until after exams are over. Maybe she'll brighten up once the stress is passed. If she does, then I don't need to worry about it anymore. If she doesn't, well, we'll cross that bridge when I come to it. I think you go for her advice and head back to my room. Maybe I'll be able to concentrate more on my studies in here. And just like that, we're at the end of the episode. Yeah. In the middle of the night. night. In the middle, middle of the, the night. night.
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that's all. Thanks. Thanks for stopping in. Everything we say, everything we sing, everything we do, we do it for love. Bye, guys. Bye. There's something I need to check out real quick. Yeah, what you need to check? Let's see. Uh. <laughs> what? Hold on. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that's all I need to say. Yeah. Uh.